sparks off your back right tire, you're losing your tire. We're gonna get on past him, his tire's completely deflated. That is a hazard right there. So yeah, not always like that, but when it does happen, cool. Take it. Get well, this is new. Coming into Columbia, we are on the new part of the road, the concrete part, so it's pretty cool. We've got a nice orange ambience of uh, sunset, which is actually to our right, but it's kind of lighting up the sky in front of it, which is beautiful. But yeah, it looks like the roads might be a lot better going into Columbia and coming into Greenville on 85 and this 26 that we're on right now. Uh, now, if only they can just get 95 done, because that's a uh, whole lot of chattered teeth on that road, but... Anyways, we've got some nice grass growing over to the right. And this is almost done. Looks like this is going to be a nice, uh, I want to say it's going to be four lane. I think they get rid of that yellow line over there. Or I mean three lane. Three lane at least. The nice, uh, maybe four lane, who knows. Anyways, making good progress. Let's get through Columbia and get down to 95. Welcome to Florida. We made it. Uh, it's about 10 o'clock, 10, 15. Gonna hit the agricultural station, and we have about 65 miles till we are. Uh, we got some something going on up here. A bunch of a bunch of lights. We'll see what that is. But first, let's get to the agricultural. Looks like it's just some kind of construction. They're putting us down to one lane. And all these guys are trying to shoot past me. Just came out of the agricultural. Get back to speed. I don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're. Uh, Putting up a new sign or something. Uh, they're on the ground, so uh, they're just changing the transition from the road to the bridge. I guess cutting some more lines in it, and doing something. Bridge maintenance. All right. Let's keep rolling. We got about 60 miles. Just reset for the night and uh, see what tomorrow brings. And through the way station. Get the green light bypass, but yeah, it's open, pulling people in. Just uh, not right now. All right, look at all those sleeping trucks and the Mac voice from Lightning McQueen. One guy over there has a uh, Christmas lights all over the front of his truck. That's kind of cool, I guess. A bunch of Christmas lights, like a light up wreath. All right, all right. Okay, let's get over. Let's get past Jacksonville. Might be able to see it, but he's got sparks coming off of that outside tire. Hey, driver, uh, with the container, you have sparks off your back right tire. You're losing your tire. We're gonna get on past him. His tire's completely deflated. That is a hazard right there. Big time. Back right tire is uh, completely flat there, sir. If you got your CB on. sets to uh, Savannah. Let's go. So I did some cool drone footage here last time I was here, but unfortunately the drone 
I don't know if it's some of the battery pack or what, but it's not powering on right now, no matter what battery I use. So that's why you haven't seen any drone footage. I don't know if I'm just gonna buy another replacement and send this one off or send this one off and wait to come back. Uh, but I've been looking at the DJI um, Mavic Mini 3, and oh my goodness, that thing is crazy cool. It has like, a, like five cameras on it. it, has a LCD screen in the remote already. I was like, man. So, but that one's like a thousand bucks. The one I have, I can get a replacement for about 300. So we'll see what we do, but that's what happened to drone shots. If you don't see any for a little bit, uh, the, I think we've got well use out of that drone, <laughs> but some is not going on right inside of it where it's not powered on. So we'll be okay, but we'll, uh, we'll get those back resuming soon enough. Uh, it's a street down here on the right, right we're after the 35 mile an hour sign. And if I remember correctly, they made me back up the entire uh, entire way last time to the other side of the building. So, let's see if that's still the drill this time. There's a nice little sign on the left saying Grief, Grief, this way. This is definitely where we were. And there's a bunch of water right behind us. There's like a little lake that kind of branches off and I think it's a nuclear plant that we passed last night it was a huge stack back up there to the right we'll see so if I pull in here to the right and then it goes all the way back to the other side so oh yeah I think we did this with the Volvo last time but maybe no maybe it was the W9 I don't know I don't remember here we go I don't remember if we had the same stuff in the back as last time, but very familiar. <laughs> nice people though, they were quick about it. They're like, hey, you gotta do this, but you gotta go all the way back around to the side. I said, okay. Looks like it has a little more room than last time too. Yeah, I think it was W9. It wasn't that long ago. If I'm going to be reversing around the whole building, I'm going to stay straight in the middle right here so I have room to back my trailer up. Uh, but it might be going right there. Who knows? Good morning, guys. Good morning. Go check it inside. These big giant rolls. Big giant rolls. I think I've done it once before we get back around the whole building. Yeah, yeah. They've right. one back there now. There's one right there, so when he comes out, all right. I'll just leave that with you and go get over there. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. So, yeah, it's the whole back around the whole building drill. All right. So, he said there's one truck already back there. Let's wait for him to get out. And he's pulling out, so that means we're up. Let's go. Like a glove. Whew, not the easiest. As long as you make this angle at the right cut, your nose barely goes into those little bushes, and then you can miss these and end up like that. There we go. Good morning. Appreciate it, bud. Thanks a lot. Oh, yeah. Thank you, man. See you next time. You too. Not too bad, we'll say. Hit the door, uh, about 30 minutes. It's about 8.30 a.m. Let's get up to Savannah. Not a lot of loads. There's this one right here. Other than that, uh, not much. I told them I did that for about 2,000, going all the way down to West Palm. Uh, we'll see if they come back on that. Maybe more will start to come into play as the day goes on, but we're gonna start heading that way anyways. At least get up to South Jacksonville look again at the lows, probably at that pilot off of uh, 295. If you guys know what I mean, probably truck drivers. Nice of that guy, he hooked up my airline again. A lot of guys, or shippers, receivers, will uh, not hook your airline back up for you. He did, and he also pulled out the wheel chalk, so thank you, sir. Not too bad of a back, but you can see where my tire went down there, just barely on the sand. You just gotta stay close to the left side and start to get your trailer to kick over a little bit. 
and you'll get it. I'm gonna veer to the left, come back to the right, go close my doors, and party in the USA. tracks that keep going by over to the right. This is a, a rail system for transporting people up and down north and south, I guess. Check lights. Okay, I'll check my lights. It was a little foggy uh, last night coming in here. This is something you don't see every day. A little earth mover just rolling down the highway. <laughs> a pretty big truck. Right. Get up here to 295. We're on the 17 right now, northbound. Nice body of water. That's the one that went by where we just were. I believe it's a lake. I think it ties into the uh, bay, though, of Jacksonville. I'm sure you guys know in the comments, but I can never pass up a good uh, body of water. I love it. Lakes, rivers, whatever. Uh, we're making good progress. We're almost into South Jacksonville. And yet some more beautiful water. <laughs> Jacksonville's right over to our right, a little further down. It's a nice little, uh, Florida's a pretty place to live if you like water. Humidity a little bit, 69 degrees out here, but I understand why a lot of people live here and move here. So. Okay, let's keep going with the morning traffic. Okay, so about 15 minutes ago, I got a notification on my phone, and I didn't think nothing of it. I saw it said, uh, you lost bid. Convoy sent you these, you lo lo lost bid. But okay, well, whatever, whatever. And there's only two loads I bid on today, and they were the same load. One was earlier, one was later. And then 15 minutes later, it says, you won. I was like, okay. And they track you guys. My GPS has been on with them. Um, well, as long as you have the app going, it, it tra tracks every time you open up the app. So I said, okay. So they know where I'm going. And I was driving probably right past where the pickup was, and they said, okay, he passed it, he's not gonna stop. Um, I don't know if they go that in depth with it, but at least they know, like, I'm right by the pickup, the time is coming up, it's a 10 to a 12 pickup, I wonder if it's 800 bucks, you can see right here. So we're going just less than 100 miles back to Dollar General, and it's a straight through, which means it delivers the same day, which is good. Kinda messes up our clock a little bit. Uh, we probably we won't be able to make it home on this clock now, which is fine, we need to make some money, we'll stay out here. We see our next move see if we can get something around jacksonville again later tonight or maybe tomorrow morning or we can make it to savannah tonight um if there's something that's picking up tomorrow morning so we'll see but less to get a load convoy woke up today thank you very much pacific northwest and uh maybe they're hearing us talk but uh, i know they have a little bit of gps tracking on you maybe they saw us passing it i don't know but either way we're, we're blessed to get this little 800 bucks real quick for a little shot across jacksonville over to the other side of 75 and go from there and see what happens next but right now we are about five miles away from getting there because we were about nine miles away from it and we just had passed it we were heading up 295 to go to that pilot and i stopped uh in the median or on the shoulder over there and, and looked at what they said and said okay i'll confirm that and uh, here we go let's do it so we got old jennings where all the other trucks are also going uh, i've never been here all the times i've been down to Florida, I've seen these loads, but they were always, like, this load was listed at $250 in the beginning. I was like, uh, it does not make uh, sense to take that. And then uh, it went up to $350, and then that's when the first other one got denied, and then this one was accepted. So I said, okay. It's kind of cool. They got, like, water, like, flowing down a faucet on the right over there. I don't know if that's a, well, yeah, that's a utility water company but it's not really a full thing of water it's just like drizzling down the sides <laughs> all right we take this to i don't know what the next road is up here but it's a major one there was a toll road there was a quicker way to get here but i had to go kind of across town up there and then down this toll road and then this way was two minutes slower but brought me back down 295 and crossed over whatever uh road we're coming up to here but we take a ride up here and it's right on the right so my first time it's a niagara facility come out in the truck and there'll be a lot of water loads you can take in the beginning like for uber freight and convoy 
there's not a huge, there's not a 30 day or a 90 day wait to get on with those companies. So like when I first came out, that's all I did was run Uber Freight. Um, but they were better rates back then. Now Uber Freight has some pretty, pretty bad rates. I've seen them pull out bidding now. And yesterday's load, they actually did come up 400 bucks. But that's very rare. Normally it's 20 bucks, 25 bucks. You're like, uh, not happening. So clearing some land over there, a bunch of sand in the land too. So I think we're taking this one or we keep going. We're probably gonna, this is 0.2 miles, take a right. So yeah, we're following that uh, Lego my Ego truck up there. Everything, every time I see Ego, I think Lego my Ego. Big commercials back in the day. All right, all right, he slammed the brakes a little. Oh, he's got a nudge car waiting for him, that's why. We're at 75 degrees now at, oh, come on, Nissan Frontier. At 10.25 in the afternoon or morning, early morning. McDonald's is serving, still serving breakfast, so it is morning still, we'll say that. So that is the toll road over to the left. There's a car back there that like swerved off the on-ramp to get back on this road. I said, nope, I don't want to take that uh, toll road. And then, all right to our right is our uh, lovely Niagara. Atlantis, Atlantis Boulevard, Atlantis Drive. All right, let's see what we got here. Looks like Lego Mago is going the same place. checkout areas over there to the left. Keep going, buddy. Come on. All right. All right. We got this. We can do it together. The entrance is probably going to be down there at the second one, not this first one. There you go. Turn your blinker off. Turn your other one on. We got it. We can do it. We can do it together. There you go. And Niagara's typically don't let you come more than two hours before your appointment. Mine's at 10 to 12, so we're right in that window. Um, you can see there's guys down there parked on the road. They probably have ones picking up later. So they're just waiting. Waiting for their days. And we got three lanes to pick up. Okay. He's going to take that one. Four lanes to pick up. Nice. He's going to take that one. I'm going to take this one. And I'm hoping this place, they're always pretty good with like a, less than two hours. But I have had it way back in the day. It would have been like four hours. But yeah, most time it's two. Cut your motor off and uh, talk talk to some people. You're driving for a convoy, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, can I get your trailer number? 531446. 32 or 32. 32, thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Have a good day. All right, door 32. Let's do this. We were the first person to get checked in, so that's cool. We got Paper Transport Inc. right in front of us. He's getting hooked up, or maybe he's just turning around. And we're going to 32. We got 13 on our left. What are you doing, Paper Transport? There you go, turn around. All right. They're moving some like mobile offices in over here, too. They've been moving around these trailers, backing them in and pulling them out. Like we're gonna try, we're gonna kind of be right where they're at, so we need that room for our nose. So I'm gonna hang out and wait for them to move. Because our door, that's 25 right there where that freight liner or the Cascadia is. And 25, 26, well, we might be able to make it work, but it'd be a lot easier if that thing was moved. Because 32 is right there in the middle on our left. We'll just try and, yeah, he's taking off the back thing and all that, so. Um, yeah. Let's go open our doors and see how long he's gonna be. Okay. <laughs> he 
got that guy. He needs to move. Cool. I tried to hand single that guy to go past me. He said, I'm going right here, too. <laughs> I said, all right, man. We need to wait for this guy to move so we can both get in here. I don't know what he's checking. He's kind of blocked in by that uh, other guy. So I'm going to attempt this. I also have to slide my tandems, but I'm not doing that till I get my trailer in here. Slide your tans like that. Try to be gentle at the back because there's just two plates back there that are welded on that keep your tandems from sliding all the way out from under your truck. So, one more time to do that. The harder it is, it could be uh, problems down the road. But he's got it. He figured it out. Well, I've been sitting here for about an hour and a half and they just called me and said, Hey, uh, can you move to door 33? The 32 is not working. <laughs> I said, All right. Well, I got stuff everywhere going on. I got Walmart with a Werner truck backing in. Next to us, uh, Lego Lego. Got a, a razor over here with three guys in it. They're moving those uh, trailers everywhere. And this got to start up, so I just got to go one over, but my tandems are slid, so it's going to take me a while. Let's do it. And for like this Warner driver right here, you don't want to be so far over to the other side. If you stayed more at the middle or closer to the trucks that are on this side, like my truck, have more room to swing around. He doesn't have any room to swing around his front of his truck. Uh, he's been trying this for a while. So just give yourself some room. Don't stay to one side. Stay in the middle is best or stay closer to the trucks. It lets you swing out your uh, front of your truck and have your angle back. Because right now his trailer's starting to go too far to the other side and he can't pull up to correct it. Well, see, well, well, well uh, he's got very, very small room to pull up now. You can do that 14 times and it'll get a little bit straighter, but just give yourself room. Now for me, I've got the Martin truck, but my tandems are slid, so I almost want to slide my tandems. And I need one of these things, guys. Look at this thing. Oh yeah, that's how I need to move my shed. Yeah. Oh man. All right, let's try and do this. This the leg of my, my ego just honked, honked at the worker guy because he was going to hit him. Hey man, <laughs> so 
Uh, he's stopping to slide his tandem, so I'm going to attempt this while I got some open traffic. But it's been busy out here. I'm going to come out left pretty hard, and I'm going to come back right pretty hard and try to get my trailer to move over. They're all probably wondering, what the heck are you doing? I'm going to be like, hey, man, your boys just called me and told me to move over after being here for a while. Yeah, I'm going to have to slide my tandem, otherwise I'm going to be doing this like four times. I only got over about two feet right there. There's so much traffic here, I don't want to block everybody. All right, come on, Niagara. Know which doors are broken. And you would think to yourself, well, that's not that big of a deal, but I'd rather move over five doors <laughs> than one because it really is hard to just move it over, especially with the limited pull-up space. So we slid our tandems back, and now we're almost lined up, and this is our third attempt to move over. It's almost easier just to come all the way out and, and approach it again. But there's so much traffic, I'm trying to get, get this done quickly and not lose my spot. So, all good. We'll get it where we need to go. Now I gotta slide my tandems back again. All right, almost there. With this last pull right here will put us on track. There we go. Now we're in 33. Oh, jeez. This place is getting sketchy. <laughs> I look up and I see a Martin trailer next to me. I'm like, uh, it's a little close. And I know my truck sticks out about three feet further than a typical aero truck, which aero truck is basically a plastic hood kind of truck that's aerodynamic. But uh, he looks like he knows what he's doing. He's just trying to get it in there. But of course you want to be uh, ready. And also my big horn that Supplies the air, won't work unless my key's on, so my key's not on right now, so I'll probably see if he gets much closer and then, uh, you just don't want to get your bumper ripped off or something while you're sitting here. But I think he might, eh, uh, he'd have to have a perfect line to make it, because if he, he might get a good line on it, he'll, he'll not have it. But yeah, nothing dull about good old Niagara this morning. We're good. All right, I think he hopefully can make that line, because he's not gonna have much room to pull up. Let's do it. He's got it. All right. Good job, man. Well, then, our green APU keeping Ace nice and cool. Um, and even cooler, uh, that load, there was two of these loads, remember? And one of them, they said I lost it. Uh, it must have been moved till tomorrow. So there's another load that just popped up. And if you look here on the right, they accepted that one, too. So that's $1,600 bucks, um, for 120 miles. Not bad. But we do have deadhead of another 60 miles, so let's say 180 miles. But we will do it over green light. So let's get out of here. So yeah, not always like that, but when it does happen, cool, we'll take it. We get to get out here and close our doors. So come with me, we're gonna walk on the wild side. Uh, then it's a 5 a.m. pickup and a 9 a.m. drop. So we'll be right back here after we drop this one and we'll do it again. First, to slide these tandems. Ah, close these doors. Got a water, Aquafina. What do you think? Uh, Dollar General's purified kind of water. Uh, okay, wrong side. Wrong side. <laughs> Here's a little box of seals if you need a couple extra ones. I got some. Don't take too many though. Uh, let's see if we can see this screen. Ooh, recovery. Looks like it's in recovery mode. All right, this one's working. English. Let's do this. You really need to put some kind of. Uh, shade right here because the sun is gleaming down and the screen's actually hot to touch probably not good for the uh for the screen or the computer <laughs> uh -huh. okay. oh this one oh uh, now let's go into walmart somebody else's there we go. Print it out. That is us, convoy. 
Dollar General. Okay. So I guess you're supposed to drop one in there. All right. I can't show you guys, but Camp Landing is to my left. There's a bunch of old military vehicles, planes, uh, all-terrain vehicles. It's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if that's active military. It says Camp Landing, Florida National Guard Military Reservation. Commander Chief Governor Ron DeSantis. Okay. But yeah, that's pretty cool. I can't show, I can't show you because I'm driving, but that was pretty. I saw all these military vehicles and jets and like an F4 Phantom. I was like, what? But uh, we're making our way. We're about 40 miles away. Just a nice little, nice little Tuesday drive. Um, and then we'll come right back this way, right back here for a 5 a.m. pickup. And there's a bunch of water off to my south also. Pretty little area. If you live around this park, it's pretty cool. Got a little train action going on. It is 81 degrees out here in Gulf Florida. They have some... Uh, Tankers and some bottom dumps, some regular cars, all kinds of stuff. I'll get some dinner somewhere around here and keep rolling. That's something going on because that black SUV was there first, and then the other two, and now the ambulance is coming up. And the train just got done going through, so I must have something happening over here. Oh, there's another fire truck. Uh oh, another train's coming through. That's why. through there because he's got a bunch of gravel and stuff in those cars all right T's and peace for whatever's going on on my side of the tracks we've got a guy bush hogging over on the left cut some grass and some cows to our right big old field and we're kind of just cutting right between south jacksonville and kind of north of ocala if you don't know where all the two is gainesville right where university of florida is right to our left there's a bunch of cows to the left too um, yeah, University of Florida, Florida Gators is right there. Probably going to be right below where we're delivering like 20 miles. So. Be off 75, and I've been here plenty of times. they got a big old lot to park at. Um, we'll come back at 5 in the morning. Probably come back way earlier than that. Probably go sleep there tonight by Noah's Niagara. Or maybe they won't load us early, I don't think, but um, we'll go back in there. bridge right here. I don't want to give this guy a scare, so there you go. Alright. But yeah, we'll go there tonight and sleep and wait for the 5 a.m. or probably get in there at 4 a.m. just to be sure. And then head right back over here. Oh, there's a bunch of white cows over there. That's kind of cool. Off to the right. They're all a couple of a couple little tiny black spots, but they're all white. Alright. Let's cruise through this middle of Florida. Get over to Dollar General. Dollar General. Well, we have two hours, two and a half hours till our appointment. Uh, and I know Dollar General doesn't take you till an hour before your appointment. So, we're going to get a little lunch because we haven't eaten since uh, we did have a warm or a, yeah, cold can of soup today. <laughs> but we got some parking here. We're inside the lines. We're out here at Alachua. And we're going to go check out the Alachua Sports Bar. It says it has a good burger. And uh, we get some iced tea burger. She goes down. We got the decorations up and Alachua Sports Bar, Alachua. And then you have like Main Street right here. There's a pizza place, a couple other places to eat. So maybe I'll walk down Main first, and then yeah, I'll probably just go here get a get a burger or a chicken sandwich. Who knows what they got in the menu? But now I'm torn because we have. Bev's better burgers. <laughs> Maybe they're better than the other place. <laughs> a cool little clock tower, little uh, baseball field, and look at a little Main Street, little Main Street Alachua. Alachua. Got Tony and Owls, Lee's hair. I feel like I'm like in a little town, a little back to the future town. Who knows? But yeah, the uh, sports bar is right there. So, it smells good. It smells like good food out here. Wonder how long this town's been here, and if you live in. Latua, uh, how often do you come down here? A pizza place, lots of options. A little general store, okay. 
Bell's? I don't know what that place is. Looks like it's a restaurant too. Okay, well, we'll figure something out. I don't ever normally look at it, but... Not bad, not bad. Let's go. Gotta say, pretty good burger. I left a Yelp review because uh, somebody else had left a review and it said that it, the food was small, the burgers were tiny. And I was like, ah, I feel like that was a pretty good size for, it was like $6. <laughs> and with fries, I was like, all right, well. It's like $6.50, so I was like, well, I'll take that. And then the double was like nine fifty. dollars you could have two patties. Good, good stuff if you ever stop by there. Get a little grub, and we are two miles away from the gold pickup. Let's go. I don't know what that distribution distribution center is to the right. I don't, I don't think it's not Walmart. Uh, this guy turning in here too. Let's see. No, he's going pretty fast. He's definitely not turning. He's coming out of Walmart. I thought that was Walmart, but it's definitely not. You guys know which one's across the street from Dollar General? And I've delivered to Walmart down here like once or twice, but mostly every time I come down here, it's Dollar General. We are almost exactly an hour before our appointment now. Got a little kickback over there. I did some editing while I was sitting there eating my burger. But if you come here late at night, you can sleep here like these guys are doing. Uh, typically, you don't park straight like that. You kind of keep it at an angle. Uh, whatever those guys are doing, that poor guy with the container is trying to get through. Looks like he's going to be a little stuck. But we don't come up to the gate till like an hour and a half before your appointment, or you, otherwise we'll just send you back out here. Um, but hey, pretty sky, man. It's gonna be a pretty sunset again. I wish I had the drone. I'm sorry, guys. I've been looking. It's like 350 bucks for a brand new uh, replacement, just the drone. But then I'm worried. I'm wondering, like, do I spend the night? It's like 909. I can get the whole new Mavic Mini 3. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I'm in the right lane. I didn't pay attention. I hope I'm in the right lane. I think I was supposed to be on the outside one. Dang it. We shall see. That's a way to piss them off right away, though. All right. Paperwork. Set the brakes. Grab a pen. Grab your ID. And there's like a number you're supposed to have every time you come to a Dollar General. A little lumper fee. Okay. a lumper service number. Receiver number. And instructions for when you get your door. Okay. And just wait over there till you get a call? Yep. Yeah. All right. Thanks, man. And there you go. And they'll probably call me like right at my appointment time. So at least we're here checked in early. Don't want to be late. Don't want to push back. Nobody else is here that's checking in. Uh, and I hope we don't have a lumper, but typically convoy has them already paid for. We will see though. Lumper, if you're new to trucking or new to trucking channels, is uh, you pay a third party service to unload your trailer. <laughs> so like the warehouse hires another company to unload their product is weird and then typically it's like capstone or i forget the other one uh, and sometimes they're hard to deal with so if you run a reefer which is a refrigerated trailer you're going to deal with that a lumper a lot more than you'll deal with it with a dry van because uh, a lot of the reefers are going to grocery distribution centers so but they pay a little bit more but i think the headache is a little bit not worth it but that's just me a lot of people love it and so just depends on your preference. Right now we're gonna hang out here, do some more editing, and wait for a phone call. Well, I'll tell you what. An hour and a half after we checked in at that door, or that gate, um, they call us, so. Biggest problem in the uh, trucking industry is the shippers and receivers, oh man waste so much time <laughs> almost fell asleep back there we got door 74 come down here and then uh take our paperwork into the shipping office and be at the mercy of them again get us unloaded it looks like 74 is going to be on that wall straight ahead of us a lot of traffic with some uh yard jockeys That yellow truck right there to the right just pulled out from next to us. Okay. He's backing up. He's going out. We'll hold the pattern. Get our doors open. Already 
it missed this water? Of course you did. And that water might have missed us, but don't worry, we're gonna bring some of its cousins right back. So there is some money still out here. You can still do sixteen hundred dollars on 120 miles. You just gotta uh, piece a couple of them together, and then we're back here again tomorrow at 9 a.m. Hopefully get unloaded. Hopefully in two hours. We'll see how long this takes, and then be uh, looking for something else. We'll probably look for something else tonight. Jacksonville, somewhere around here, maybe even going back uh, Atlanta, South Carolina, wherever it takes us back up and then we could maybe do it all again or maybe we'll just take one down to florida even further south if they pay enough because when you're coming down here to the florida really the further you go down into it the more you gotta get paid to come out of it so and i know thanks for watching and uh see what we can get tomorrow god bless you and i'll see you on the next one